Hello, and thank you for joining us to watch Appetizer, our talk show, under our channel, Imagination. My name is Dr. Bini Zarai. My name is Agahapte, and we are the host of the Appetizer. If this is your first time watching our show, welcome and please watch the first episode to hear more about my background and the background of Dr. Bini. If you are a returning viewer, it's great to have you back. Today, we are excited to present to you our guest. But before we introduce our interviewee and show the interview, we would like to, remain, to mention a few points. Saga, maybe this is a good time to remind our viewers who we are and what's the purpose of our talk show. Of course, Dr. Bini. Actually, that is a good place to start our episode. We call our show The Appetizer, and we are broadcasting from Los Angeles, California. Our show focuses on these following three main goals. Number one, work hard to energize and involve our new generation to share their experiences publicly and get them involved in a manner that reflects their vision and ambition. Number two, interview as many U.S. officials as possible to engage them, to see what they know about us, to introduce them to our community, to learn from our, their experience, and to con consciously work a building mutually beneficial relationship. Number three, at a grassroots level, through sustained effort, work hard to link the long run the two nations, Eritrea and the United States of America. We interviewed the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, our first episode of this appetizer. This is our second episode. Thank you, Zaga. Continuing our series interviewing US officials, today we bring you one of the members of the Los Angeles City Council, our District 8 Councilman, Marcus Harris Dawson. Before we start the interview, let me read a brief biography. Prior to his election to the Los Angeles City Council, Councilmember Harris Dawson was president and CEO of Community Coalition, one of the most progressive nonprofit organizations in Los Angeles, succeeding the founder, Congresswoman Karen Bass. His first campaign as an organizer resulted in a groundbreaking $153 million for repair and modernization of the South LA schools. Under his leadership, community coalitions successfully grew its budget, staff, and influence within the South LA. As a chairman of the Planning and Land Use Committee, the council member has authorized more affordable housing in District 8 than anywhere in the city. Mm -hmm. He works to bring his vision, quality housing, good paying jobs, busy commercial corridors, and high performing schools to life in the 8th District of Los Angeles. District 8 includes the Baldwin Hills, mm -hmm. West Adams, and Crenshaw communities, yeah. and other neighborhood on the western side of South Los Angeles. He authored Proposition Triple H, yeah. a $1.2 billion bond measure to fund permanent supportive housing, the largest investment toward ending homelessness in the nation within the first 18 months as a council member. Never afraid to discuss issues of race and equity. Council member Harris Dawson understands how decades of systematic disinvestment have harmed communities yeah. like South LA. Yeah. And he knows that South Los Angeles' greatest resource is its people. The 8th district is home to over 248 residents yeah. and has the highest concentration of African American in the city. Destination Crenshaw is an indicator of his passion for community, art, and culture. A first of its kind, $100 million plus anti-gentrification measure designed as a series of community parks, comes to life as a living museum dedicated to preserving and highlighting the legacy of Black Los Angeles in the mm -hmm. history Crenshaw Corridor. Mm -hmm. 
Council Member Harris Dawson brought together leaders from South LA yep. to ensure that yep. Destination Crenshaw built for and yep. by the community. Marcus and his wife, Kerry, are from South Los Angeles. His love, for, his love, compassion, and empathy for the city makes him a great advocate for the future. Thank you, Council Member Harris Dawson, for joining us. Let me go straight to my first question. What is your role as Council Member of District 8 in the Los Angeles City Council? Thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you, and uh, thank you for your friendship uh, before I was on the City Council and, and uh, now that I'm on the City Council. Uh, the role of the uh, City Council is to manage or to be the Board of Directors for the municipal, the municipal Corporation that is the City of Los Angeles, and that corporation has a lot of things that it, it uh, assets that it owns and runs. So airports, ports, uh, are we're responsible for fire service, police service, uh, utilities, uh, transportation, so all of our roads and sidewalks, uh, recreation and parks and beaches, um, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, the control of energy. So the oil pipes run underneath the city and there's some drilling in the city of LA. And also the other big giant thing that, that you're responsible for uh, as a member of the council is land use management. So whenever you want to have a piece, whenever you have a piece of land and you want to build something, you need a building permit. Those are issued and managed by the city of Los Angeles. Thank you, Councilman. What brought you into politics? What were your original career goals? I was interested in politics uh, from a very young age. Uh, when we did a Black History Month report, uh, when I was in the second grade, uh, I they had us draw out of the hat who you wanted to write your, you know, write your thing about and put pictures on. And the person I picked was Martin Luther King. And uh, at that time, I thought, wow, this would be a cool job to have. But I couldn't really tell what his job was. <laughs> um, and uh, I couldn't tell what he got, how he got, you know, uh, took care of his responsibilities. Uh, and I continued to follow politics. I got very involved in the uh, movement uh, to free Nelson Mandela and end apartheid in South <laughs> Africa when I was in middle school and um, high school. And then I eventually went to Morehouse College, uh, which is the alma mater of Martin Luther King. And that's really where my activism got uh, honed or politicized. Just following your answer to my colleague, it's a guest question. Can you walk us through your appearance in the Oprah Winfrey show? I believe that was back in 2000. Uh, that was during my role as a community activist. I was the leader of a campaign, uh, uh, organized campaign to get the school district to improve some of the conditions at our public schools uh, in South LA and around the city. And we won $100 million in repairs, uh, resources for repairs for our schools. Uh, and got them fixed. In many cases, the bathrooms didn't work or there was no lighting in the classrooms. And so we had conditions in our schools in the middle of Los Angeles, as wealthy as Los Angeles and California is, we had conditions where the schools were like second world uh, or, or, or rural uh, facilities uh, that we worked to improve. And so that's the work that uh, Oprah Winfrey uh, was attracted to and we got involved. I was I got involved in, with uh, community organizations at a very young age and just kind of worked my way up until I, you know, I was given more and more leadership roles. Uh, and eventually I led the community coalition. I was the CEO and president. And from there is, it was in that stage or in that role that I just started, decided to run for office. That was quite an achievement for you individually and for the South LA as a district. Thank you for your fighting to improve the livelihood of the district. What general advice do you have for the youth, Mr. Councilman? My advice is understand your power and the responsibility and the risk that comes with that. Um, you know, young people now have more opportunity than any of their predecessors. You know, every young person now is born into a world where by the time they're 12 or 13 years old, they're gonna have in their pocket enough computing power. The, the, the computer chip inside this phone is more powerful than the computer chip that sent the first rocket to the moon. Um, so uh, they can talk to anybody in the world in a split second. 
Uh, so I think they have more power in their hands to create a better reality than the people before them. And I think it's dramatically different now than it was for generations before them. Thank you for the advice, Mr. Councilman. The Eritrean community appreciates the support you have been providing to the community, including the family of Hermes Dawit Asgodon. In addition, it was great that you led the effort to name the Crenshaw and Slauson intersection, Hermes Nafsi Hassel Square. We are so grateful. What are the plans to remember and celebrate Nafsi Hassel's legacy? Uh, we will do a big celebration of uh, the naming of uh, the uh, Nipsey Hustle Square, and we will put up the signs. Uh, we're trying to, we've been having deference to the family. We didn't want to do it before they were prepared to do it. And so hopefully when we're done with COVID in the coming months, uh, we'll have a big celebration there. We also want to make sure we help the family develop the park, the lot that Nipsey uh, 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 that Ermius and his family had acquired before, just before his uh, uh, assassination. Uh, so those are the two big things that we're going to do. And then there has, we have some other surprises, so you can stay tuned. Thank you for your leadership to see through the project, Councilman. And we will wait eagerly for the yeah. surprises. Yes, yes. Can you tell us something about the proposed destination Crenshaw? Very excited about Destination Crenshaw. We want to make it so that the Crenshaw district uh, exemplifies and has on the street the story of African-American people in Los Angeles and in the West Coast. There's no place where you can really get the history of Black people in Los Angeles and in California. Uh, and so we want to make Crenshaw the heart of that. The Hyde Park community is uh, the largest uh, contiguous black community anywhere west of Chicago, Illinois in the entire uh, United States. Uh, and so we'll do that. So when the train runs along uh, Crenshaw Boulevard, when you look out the window on either side, you're gonna see artwork, you're gonna see statues, you're gonna see monuments, you're gonna see uh, storytelling murals uh, up and along the corridor. We hope that that space gets occupied by art galleries and coffee shops and performance venues. So you can stay there, you can linger, you can hear our story and get our culture. Uh, one of the things we feel is that everybody in the world buys uh, uh, the culture of black people in the United States, especially Los Angeles, uh, but we don't ever get the benefit of it. Uh, that's why Nipsey Hussle was so special to us uh, because what he said is if you're gonna hear my music from this neighborhood, I'm, you're gonna, I'm gonna make you come to this neighborhood and spend money to buy my t-shirt, to buy my record, to buy my hat or painting or whatever it is. Uh, and we wanna do more of that uh, and build up on that example. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. I know this is dear to your heart. How are you tackling homelessness in your district? Homelessness, you know, we're really struggling. I think we're in the, we're turning the corner and getting the housing units built, uh, but we have to get our people off the street. We gotta get the people into housing with services that need it. We gotta get the people into housing with services who don't need it. And we gotta get the people who need to be under mental health care to be under care and not just let them be in the streets until they hurt themselves or hurt someone else. Cause that's our current policy and we need to move, uh, move, move past that. And so those are, those are the things that we're uh, very interested in and very passionate about. Uh, also something that's very, very important to me is having a team uh, and having a, a team, my staff and beyond my staff, but especially on my staff, of people who are uh, energetic, smart, and passionate enough to take the baton and continue the, the struggle. And uh, that's why I'm proud to have folks like Aiden on my team. Aiden's our deputy on homelessness, uh, but also I put her in charge of everything uh, that has to do with the continent. We will not end this interview without this question. Do you have a message specifically for the Eritrean community? Yeah, my message to the Eritrean community is just, first of all, thank you. And thank you for uh, uh, making uh, an effort to bond with the larger community, especially the larger African-American community, whether those are people who are descendants of slavery in the United States, or they come from other parts of the African diaspora, whether it's South Africa, West Africa, the Caribbean, Latin America, Europe. Uh, thank you for uh, becoming a part of that family and, and helping uphold that family. 
The other thing I would say is just continue to push, uh, you know, to the extent that you or your family members are immigrants to this country, you came to this country with an idea. And I think in every case you get here and you realize it isn't quite what you thought it was going to be or what we, what they tell you it is. Uh, and I think all of us should take the position once you're here and you work every day, you have every right and every responsibility to be a part of the process to make the community and make the country what it says it is and who we say we are. Uh, and so you have as much right to that fight as anybody else does. Um, and, you know, we, we welcome you to the struggle to build the kind of community we all deserve to live in. Thank you, Councilman, for sharing your time and knowledge with us. As you know, one of the appetizer goals is to work closely with local, state, and federal officials to make our community better. We are grateful that in the last few years, you have joined us to celebrate Eritrean Independence Day, for which you have provided numerous certificates of recognition. You also attend the 25th anniversary of Eritrean Orthodox Tohado Church here in Los Angeles, in the name of the large Eritrean community, I thank you, Councilman Harris Dawson. Indeed, Zaga. Before we let you go, Mr. Councilman, any final message? Look forward to seeing you all again soon. We'll be, hopefully the uh, Orthodox Church will be open over here by my house soon. Likewise, Councilman. We look forward to seeing you and interact with you mm -hmm. in person. That was great, Zaga. Mm. Let me ask you this. What are some of your memories when you interact with the councilman? Of the many interactions I have had with council, councilman, the two events that I always remember are when he joined us for the, our 28th Eritrean Independence Day celebration and the 25th anniversary of the Eritrean Orthodox Church in Los Angeles. I do remember those two events. Thanks to you, Tsegga. He graciously accepted our invitation for those two events. I think we have some pictures to show of those two events. Tom, can you upload some of the pictures on the screen? Yes, I remember this. He joined us with his beautiful wife, Miss Carey, and other dignitaries. Yes, we were and are grateful he joined us to celebrate our independence. I remember there, are, there were other dignitaries as well. I think some of them were from the city of LA mm -hmm. and others were African diaspora who joined us for the occasion. And then of course, you remember this as well, Zaga. Mm -hmm. This is the 21st uh, Medhani Alam celebration. This is one of the events the councilman mentioned at the end of the interview. He said, the church by my house. He lives in the same neighborhood, by the way. The church is now officially open for in-person worship. Yes, we had colorful and wonderful celebration. We should put together a video clip of the event and share it with the larger Eritrean community. I think we should. We'll check with our colleagues on that. The event was one of its kind in LA and probably in the entire America and Canada diocese. It was well attended by priests, dignitaries, the faithful, and above all, by all our children. Great memories. That concludes today's appetizer. Our channel followers, thank you for watching. Please leave your comment below and or email us at the address shown on the screen. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We will be back soon with another tasty treat. Happy 4th of July, as we had our Eritrean Independence Day in May 24. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching. Sala, who, 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 who,
Mam, que igual vou colocar um... 